Hi guys, it's Kelly here, and today we are doing a special blog hop. This is for the uh, Katie M. Murphy Foundation. It's a kindness car drive. Katie was uh, diagnosed with a congenital heart defect, and unfortunately she passed away at the age of six. Her mom wanted to do something to help the children who were still in the hospital dealing with these things, dealing with these illnesses, so they decided to come up with a uh, kindness a care package that they're going to send with like play-doh and colored pencils and blankets and they wanted to include handmade cards so they're doing a card drive so um please head over to my blog for all of the information it's in the description below if you're watching on youtube so we're gonna make a couple of cards here they're just kind of encouraging they're not looking for get well cards just something to kind of make them smile and so as you saw in the beginning there i picked um some my favorite things stamps that are um princess and knight themed it's it's once upon a time and i wish i could remember the name oh knight in shining armor that makes sense right he's totally a knight so when i am making multiples of cards i like to come up with a layout that i can make the same but different so what i did here was i created a mask using copy paper and tombow mono multi glue because when it dries uh, it's repositionable so if you put it down while it's wet it's permanent if you let it air dry it's repositionable so i cut out a, a just a piece of copy paper with a circle die from simon says stamp and then i'm going to use some distress things to create a bunch of different backgrounds and on my blog as well as the YouTube description, all of the supplies will be listed. So if you have a question about what color combination I used, uh, you can look there. Um, I will try to tell you them when I show you them uh, complete, but I'm not gonna show you every single one of them because this was super time consuming. But you can tell it's totally a clean mask, which I love. Um, Anytime you're making a clean and simple card, those crisp edges are so important because everything will show. So this one over here was um, mustard seed, cracked pistachio, peacock feathers, and salty ocean. Then abandoned coral, mustard seed, mowed lawn, and blueprint sketch, I think. Um, and then the last one was wilted violet picked raspberry and salty ocean and blueprint sketch so now i'm using my misty so that i can stamp all of my stamps at once because i'm going to be fussy cutting them out um, so that they can sit on top of their little circles i love the misty for this it lets me allow things to stamp multiple times um, and I have to tell you normally if this is your first time watching one of my videos uh, You know, I normally do not speed up my Copic coloring um, I just let the video be as long as it needs to be but because there was we're making four cards here And there's four images and there's so much coloring going on. I had to speed it up a little bit guys um, I'm sorry. I'll try to explain what I'm doing as we go so for their skin tones i just really added some shading underneath his helmet um, his arm is behind the horse so that would automatically be darker and then around her hairline and then the same thing look with her hands and the little bit of skin that's showing on her feet i mean really i only had to put like two colors there but with their faces um you know coming down from their hairline i try to go around their face a little bit to give them a more round appearance uh, and i completely forgot her neck somehow i don't even know how that happened so i had to go back and nab that real quick and then um i'm gonna blend out to almost to all the way to the end but i wanted them to have like a little bit of a pink cheek i prefer an r20 for that and then just to blend the pink in so it's not so stark i went over the whole thing with my lightest color here, this is like my go-to brown combination. I don't know. I just love the 50s. I don't know why. Um, probably because they're just so warm. Um, but I'm going to do all of my browns in the same color. This is going to A, save me time making multiple cards, and B, it's going to, the cards will make more sense as a set. Okay, and I know they're not a set. They're going to go, they're going to go to all different kids, but I have a real problem here folks i have a hard time doing a post with multiple images that the cards don't match okay i know that that sounds like lunacy but we all have a little bit of crazy in us anyway uh, so when i'm doing the shading on the horse i colored the back legs and the back ear automatically one shade darker so the front leg is the E53, the back leg is completely filled in with the E55, and then I'm adding the shading as I go. I wanted his mane to be darker than his body, so I'm only adding the E59 to his hair, and then also um, to those back legs. Anything that's darker automatically falls behind. So 
if you just make something one shade darker, it's all right. It's going to give it a three dimensional look and like you did nothing. You did no effort. And I love that. <laughs> I love that because as much as I love to color and, and create and do all these things, I'm also lazy. I'm it's I'm very, very lazy. Um, so I did his hoofs with the uh, the E59 and then I felt like his hair lost a little bit of darkness. So I added just a couple of lines of that back in going to use those same colors to do her hair. Um, I'm going to be a little less heavy handed with the E59, but it's, with hair, I like to use the flicking motion because in your hair, there's natural highlights and low lights. Um, so bright spots and dark spots. And by using the flicking motion and, and creating those quote unquote strands, it gives more texture and it makes it look more realistic. I mean, now clearly these stamps are cute and, and whimsical and that's the style that they're drawn in, which is fantastic. So we're not going like uber real. We're not going photo realistic here. Um, I don't even know if I'm capable of that but you do want it to be something that you're going to be happy with. So her hair would be darker behind her neck, so just make sure you add some shading there. We're going to move on to the grays. Now my little knight is going to be a whole lot of gray, but we want to make sure the pieces don't blend into each other. So I'm laying down where I want my shadows to be with the C1, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing with the shield yet, so I just kind of shaded the whole thing, but I didn't even end up doing that. With the C3, I'm going to go in um, behind like the face mask of the helmet and then on the edges of it. I want the very tippy top of it to still be pretty light because I want that contrast. I want it to look like the rest of the helmet is falling behind. For the C5, I'm going to fill in the little face slots. I'm also going to do a line behind the helmet to bump up that contrast. And then I'm going to add that to his body underneath his belt, that back sleeve on the arm, um, and then just a little bit on the edges of the shield. I'm going to go back through um, and blend everything out, uh, you know, just like we did the first time around, just going over everything a second time. I just feel like that gives me a better blend. Uh, if you don't feel like that's necessary, then don't do it. It's totally, there isn't a, like a, you're not wrong. Oh my gosh, you're wrong because you didn't do it two times. No, it's, it's fine. Sometimes I don't do it two times if I get a good blend on the first time. I just normally do it twice. And sometimes when you get into a habit, it sticks. Um, with the unicorns, I stamped two of them, which I didn't even acknowledge. I'm such a weirdo. Uh, I stamped two of them because I didn't think they were going to be big enough to carry the card. I was wrong. I only needed one of them, <laughs> but I colored two anyway, so maybe I'll use the other one for something else. But I wanted them to be white. I felt like unicorns are white. Anytime you're coloring something white, you're only adding in the shadows. So that's all I did was just add the darkest parts. While I had the brown out, I forgot that I did not color his little saddle, which I have to tell you, like, what kind of world are we living in where unicorns are getting saddled? You know what I'm saying? That just makes me sad. But um, anywho, so I used those same browns. I only added the darkest part to the darkest areas, blending everything back out, giving it a once over with the lightest color. And then we're moving on to the next one. So him, I knew um, I wanted him to kind of be blue and green. That was the background that I kind of had picked in my head for him. So I'm going to add the little feather in his cap is going to be blue. I'm going to add some shading to those stripes. I wanted everything to have a cohesive look and I knew I wanted him to be blue and green. So I didn't do all of the stripes blue, just like I'm not going to do all of the diamonds on the, um, I'm not a, a, a equestrian, huh? Ah, I came up with that word. So proud of myself right now. Like, I hope you're proud of me. I hope you're sitting at home like, yeah, she came up with that word. Anyway, um, I wanted the unicorns to have a rainbow mane. So while I'm busting out these rainbow colors, I'm just going to add them to the mane as we go. Anyway, um, I didn't want the entire cover for the, the horse, the blanket, the whatever it is, um, to be one color. I wanted to save some room for the green as well as the stripes in the shield and the little stars that are on it, uh, just so everything had a cohesive look with the background that I had selected. And again, just adding shading underneath his feet uh, where it would wrap around the horse's body, it would be darker. Um, and then I'm going to hit that mane up again with the green. Of course, I have to make my dragon neon green because what other color would he possibly be? My son is, um, there's a new show on uh, Nick Jr. called Digby Dragon. Yeah, we're watching a lot of that lately. Um, a lot. A lot of it. Whew. Anyway, it could be worse. It, we could be watching Peppa Pig, which he also loves, I have to tell you, and I do not. It weirds me out the way they snort after everything. But anyway, moving on to the coloring. 
so he would have darker shading. I tried to add some like behind his snout so he would have a little bit more dimension and then underneath his neck um, where his, under, like the bottom of his tail, the bottom of his arm, um, his bottom left hand foot is almost entirely covered up by his body so that would be darker. And then I had originally thought, well, I'll make him be on green and then I'll give him like little pink accents because he was going to be like a night dragon. I don't like the pink folks. So I ended up going with the traditional yellow, green, yellow dragon. And I only picked two colors to blend his belly with. That was all that was necessary. And then I'm going to go back and make his wings green. I'm just not going to add as much shading. They have that round um, edge on the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of extend the line that's already there to give him a little bit of depth. I'm going to add some shading on that left hand wing because it's more behind his body and his hand. And then just blend everything out. I added the yellow to the mane while I had that out and then I just picked a, it's like a tomato-y red, the RO5. It's new to me. It's new to my collection. Um, and I'm not being careful when I'm doing the mane, let me tell you. I'm not being careful not to go over all the other colors. I, I'm not. It, it doesn't matter because it gives the illusion of a rainbow and that's all you need is the illusion. Um, for the princess, you'll see that there is some shading on one of her ribbons and on the ribbons that are wrapped around her um, hat. I thought I was going to make them white. Didn't turn out that way, guys. I let it go. I, it just wasn't enough color for me. I know that this is shocking news to you. So for her dress, I wanted it to be violet, and I'm doing one of the ribbons, because that's all I think I'm doing at this point. Um, but where her dress is gathered, it would be darker. Where her arms are closer to her body, it would be darker. When it comes to that ribbon, to give it some movement, you have to have peaks and valleys. So the way when the ribbon bends up, that would be uh, lighter. When it bends back, that would be darker. So when you're adding your shading, just kind of keep that in mind so that you have some movement in that ribbon. And then, of course, because I am a grown woman who still wants to be a princess at heart. I, I would be Belle. I would not be a pink princess. I would be Belle because she loves the books and I love the books. But anyway, I went with pink and purple. I went with pink and purple because I liked it. That's it. I got no other reason. I'm sure there's princesses out there that could be all other kinds of colors, uh, but I guess I'm a traditionalist. So anyway, adding the shading around the hat where it's coming out from underneath like the top of her, it's not the top of her dress, where the double skirts are sitting on top. Are those called petticoats? Petticoats goes underneath, right? Whatever. Anyway, that would be darker where it's coming out from the purple part of the dress. And then an RO2 really picks up an RO4. And that kind of was a benefit to me because I got a little bit heavy handed in the middle of her hat and in the middle of her um, like corset laced up part of the dress. So I decided I was going to go back in and add the purple because I liked that better than the white. I cannot help myself but to add white uh, gel pen to, to all the things. So I put a little highlight on my unicorn's horn. I added some polka dots to her dress. I also added some polka dots to my dragon just along his back side where his tail is so that he would have something a little interesting. It's hard to see on camera because that YG01 is so bright, but in real life you can see it. And then I just hit my knight with a couple little highlights. I like to outline everything because I love a bold black line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I have die cut all of these um, clouds, but I also fussy cut out all of the images. While we watch me put my clouds together, let me just tell you, I will never tell you to buy something that I don't think that you need. I will never recommend something that I don't love myself. If you plan on using these stamps, these this Once Upon a Time and these Knight in Shining Army from my favorite things. And I think they're adorable and I would highly recommend them. They're good quality. It's a good, uh, it's a good brand. Um, but for the love of all that is holy, save yourself and buy the dies. I never buy the dies. I never buy the dies for anything, but I fussy cut all of these. If you're new to card making, you don't know what fussy cutting means. It means that you fuss about every single one of those images and you cut them right up against the line. Um, I like fussy cutting and it was a rough go. Like around the little dragon spikes, around those ribbons, uh, around the unicorn's tail. Whew, get the dies, just do it. Just buy the dies, just commit. Um, but anyway, one of the things I did to make, myself, make it a little bit easier for myself was when I was outlining, I made the lines a little thicker. 
uh, that's something that you can do to kind of like bulk up your image so that it's easier to cut out. Um, when something has really fine lines, it is more difficult. So now that I have everything adhered together with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, I'm going to use my Misty again to stamp my sentiment. Again, with such a clean and simple card and trying to go for that really crisp look, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to drop my sentiment. I wasn't going to scooch it while I was trying to stamp it down. Um, so just, I got the Misty. I'm going to use it. This is the best time to use it because so far everything, I mean, it's, it's so far it's smooth sailing here, folks. I don't even know how it happened with four cards, but I have not made an error. Um, it, Christmas miracle. Um, so anyway, I'm going to stamp all the sentiments on all of them. And then I'm going to go in with some Clairwin Costella just on the clouds. And that's it. That's all four cards. Um, I can't believe there, there wasn't anything that went horribly awry, but I love the way that they came out. And I really hope that the children love them and it kind of brightens their day. I love that little sentiment. And if you're interested in donating to the card drive, there are sponsors. Simon Says Stamp is one of the sponsors. Um, so you can, there's a submission form when you send in the cards, but head over to the blog and it'll give you all of the details. And the link is down below in the description on YouTube. And thank you guys so much for joining me. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.